You want to support Roller Mark Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. as Roller Mark Unfiltered by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. I'm going to pull this up, y'all. I got to deal with this here. Uh, because, uh, Robert, did, did you see or hear uh, the prayer that uh, Paula White gave at the Trump rally the other day? I, I did indeed. Okay, so for the folks out there, uh, I, I'm going to play this for y'all. And, and also, just so y'all know, uh, I did, because uh, you know, I remember last time Paula White did some stuff, <laughs> uh, I, I, I hit her up, I emailed her, she responded, oh, she was taken out of context. Uh, and I said, well, you need to come on to the show. She never did. Uh, I text her this time and also emailed her. She has not responded. Uh, but for the folks at home, um, and, and let me let me give the background for a lot of people out there. We're talking about Paula White, who is literally pastoring a black church in Orlando. The Paula White who took over for the previous pastor uh, who passed away. This is the same Paula White mm -hmm. who got her credibility are preaching to black folks, uh, preaching uh, on BET. Uh, and so this was her, y'all, the other night at the Trump rally. Uh, Henry, go to my iPad. Good evening. Are you ready for a great night of victory? I'm going to ask you to do something. As our president often says, and I've had the wonderful privilege of having an 18-year relationship with him and his family, he says, we worship God, not government. So we're going to start out. I'm going to ask you to grab that person's hand next to you, if you don't mind standing up all over this beautiful arena, and just grab that sweaty hand that you've been holding. I believe in the power of unity. And as we begin to make declarations and come to the Father in prayer, Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. And first and foremost, I give you thanks for our great United States. I give you thanks for our president and for your blessings and your goodness. Your word declares in Psalm chapter 34, verse 1, that I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. So we thank you and we bless you, God, for your goodness, for your grace, for your mercy. I pray for the spirit of the Lord to rest upon our president and let your favor cause his horn, his power to be exalted according to Psalm chapter 89, verse 17. Lord, your word says in Psalm chapter two, verse one through four, why do the nations conspire and the people's plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break their chains and throw off their shackles. The one enthroned in heaven laughs. The Lord scoffs at them. Father, you have raised President Trump up for such a time as this. You are a God that reveals secrets. So reveal the secret and the deep things to President Trump, according to Daniel chapter 2, verse 22. Make known unto him the mystery of your will. I declare that skillful and godly wisdom have entered into the heart of our president, and knowledge is pleasant to him. Father, we ask you to compass him with men and women and make their heart and ears attentive to godly counsel, to do that which is right in your sight. Now I need you to really go with me here. Let every evil veil of deception of the enemy be removed from people's eyes in the name which is above every name, the name of Jesus Christ. For you said in your word, so I'm gonna deal with some principalities now, okay? Cause you said in your word in Ephesians chapter six, verse 12, that we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So right now, let every demonic network that has aligned itself against the purpose, against the calling of President Trump, let it be broken, let it be torn down in the name of Jesus. Let the counsel of the wicked be spoiled right now. 
now, according to Job chapter 12, verse 17. I declare that President Trump will overcome every strategy from hell and every strategy of the enemy, every strategy, and he will fulfill his calling and his destiny. Destroy and divide their tongues, O Lord, according to Psalm chapter 55, verse 9. Give President Trump strength to bring forth his destiny, according to Isaiah chapter 66, verse 9. Let the secret counsel of wickedness be turned to foolishness right now in Jesus' name. And I declare that no weapon formed against him, his family, his calling, his purpose, this counsel will be able to be formed. Now I declare that you will surround him and protect him from all destruction. Let the angel of the Lord encamp around about him, around his family, according to Psalm chapter 34, verse 7. Establish him in righteousness and let oppression be far from him, according to Isaiah 54, 14. I deploy the hand of God to work for him in the name of Jesus. I secure his calling. I secure his purpose. I secure his family. And we secure victory in the name which is above every name, the name that has never failed for this nation and for my life, the name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said, amen. Now I'm going to let Robert, Johanna, and Greg weigh in in just a moment. <laughs> but let me say a few words first. <laughs> Since Paul, Pastor Paula White wants to quote scripture, you should go to Psalm 1-1 where it mm -hmm. said, The godly do not walk in the counsel of the wicked. I dare say, Pastor Paula White, the wicked is when you are a president who allows people on the border to somehow be sleeping on uh, uh, cement floors. How you would go to court and say, we don't even have to give them toothbrushes. I dare say, if you call yourself a so-called Christian, you would have the decency to treat human beings like human beings. Mm. Here's what I also want to know, Pastor Paula White, when Reverend William Barber and other preachers and ministers of the gospel and Jews uh, and uh, Buddhists and others had a prayer walk from, from the uh, church here in New York Presbyterian to the White House, why did this administration lock them out of Lafayette Park? I also want to know, Pastor Paula White, why you as a pastor did not have the courage and the decency to tell Donald Trump why you are afraid to meet with other ministers of the cloth who you might disagree with. See, if you actually have God on your side, hmm. if you supposedly have Jesus on your side, hmm. then you would not be afraid to meet with other ministers of the gospel. You also said that the evil veil of deception be removed. Please explain to me how you as a pastor defends a man who lies and lies and lies. Please, as a pastor, explain to me how you are supposed to be telling folks to speak truth when you support a man who lies without a doubt who lies about lies every single day. Please tell me how you can talk about uh, 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 every demonic network aligned against Trump. If you're going to pray that thing, then specify that thing. What networks are you talking about, Pastor Paula White? See, what I cannot stand is when you have pastors who pimp God, mm. pastors who have not a a prophetic word, but a partisan word. See, a prophetic word means you ain't afraid to meet with somebody who you disagree with. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., prophetic, had no problem meeting with folks who disagree with. But see, Pastor Paula White, you support a man who will not meet with people who he simply do not like. How do you dare support a man who routinely trashes women and denigrates women, women, children of God? How do you not say a word? You stand in front of a nearly all-white rally in Orlando thundering this particular prayer, saying God is going to cover Trump, saying that God raised Donald Trump up. But see, I got to go to my Bible. I do, I do remember that God said, oh, so y'all want a ruler? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and give y'all a ruler. Hmm. Y'all, I, I remember God saying, I told y'all, you don't need a king. But the people said, no, 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 we want a king. Okay, y'all can have Saul. And then what happened? Lord, they were upset. May, no, no, don't come complain to me. Y'all said y'all wanted a king. 
See, that's what's really going on here, Pastor Paula White. You are misusing the word in defense of somebody who you know ain't even a real Christian. Hmm. See, I would rather you go ahead and just have some basic decency and respect <clears throat> and say that the reason you support Donald Trump is because he's giving y'all conservative judges because y'all want to overturn Roe v. Wade. Y'all want to overturn same-sex marriage. See, I'd rather have the decency to tell the people that as opposed to cloak yourself in the word and stand there uh, as a pastor and somehow pray that kind of prayer. See, the God that I serve, the Jesus that I bow down to, the one that I pray to knows full well that he would not sit here and uh, accept nor give cover, nor give praise, nor give acceptance to what is happening in 1600 Pennsylvania every single day. There is no way in the world, Pastor Paula White, the God that I know, the Jesus that I know, will say that what happens there is acceptable. I know the God that I know and the Jesus that I know will not allow somebody uh, who would denigrate and desecrate people all the time. I know uh, also the same God wouldn't be happy if a president has a nerve to send a press release out saying he's going to a church to pray with the victims of a shooting in Virginia and he walks in church with his golf spikes on to accept the prayer just for him and wasn't even good enough to stay for the whole service. Because see, the God I know is a mess man who's good enough that when you had the shooting in Pittsburgh, the people there said, we don't even want you to come. See, if you actually walked with the Lord, if you actually presented yourself as being somebody who loves the Lord, then synagogues wouldn't be turning you away. Churches wouldn't be turning you away. Mosques wouldn't be turning you away. People of faith wouldn't be turning you away. Because the last I checked, the only kind of person who people of faith turn away is darkness, hmm. is evil, hmm. are wicked individuals. And so that's going to be a day of reckoning for you, Pastor Paula White. That's going to be a day when you're going to have to answer to who you supported. And that day might come real soon. And see, I ain't talking about just when you got to deal with Jesus and the Lord on this. You got to deal with this with the very people who elevated you. You're going to have to deal with whether or not uh, how you defend the demonic positions of this particular president. You got to defend the demonic positions where you have somebody who chooses to give more wealth to the wealthy and says the hell with the poor. You're going to have to defend Paula White and administration that have the audacity to say we will cut the food that go to the poor. It's, please explain to me what Bible you serve. I'm sorry. I got an iPad, an iPad, an iPhone, and an iPhone. I got the Bible on all four of these devices. Please let me know which one of these Bibles that I can somehow discover to defend somebody who don't care about the poor, somebody who does not care about the hopeless, somebody who does not care about the needy. Please show me the last time this man had any sense of decency or respect to those individuals. I have yet to actually see it, Pastor Paula White. And again, I would love to have a theological conversation with you. I would love to have you to sit here uh, and walk through the text to explain to me how what is happening for this administration is biblical. Because see, I just thought with the whole line. How do you defend a man you say is godly? You said God, this is what you said. You said God raised President Trump up for such a time as this. <laughs> what that means is that you, as a pastor, you are suggesting that God co-signs everything that he has done. Are you willing to tell God that? Are you willing to pray that every single night? Please tell me that. See, Pastor Paula White, I'm more than well, help, uh, welcome to have you sit in this chair. And I have Reverend William Barber sit in that chair. And I have Reverend Jim Wallace sit in that chair. And I'll open a chair for one of your other friends. I would love for you to come here and discuss this. And let me remind you, you came on the radio show WVON in Chicago when you were pushing your book. I had you on the show then. You were on the stage at Bishop T.D. Jake's uh, conference. Uh, I was there. See, you, you might remember, I pulled a video because I shot the video when my wife received one of the awards uh, for her work, uh, for her foundation work. You, you, you were on stage presenting the award. See, I, I, I got your cell phone, Pastor Paula White. I got your email. See, so all I, I'm a child of God. I'm a Christian author. 
And so why won't you have the conversation? Why won't you sit down with pastors who disagree with this president and have a real theological conversation? You had one a couple of years ago uh, at Bishop T.D. Jake's leadership conference. Oh, you remember Father Michael Flager was on stage. Father Joshua Dubois, pastor, was on stage. You remember Bishop Harry Jackson was on stage. Bishop Jakes was sitting in the audience. The four of y'all was moderated by April Ryan. Why won't you have that conversation again so we can go over what has taken place in the last two and a half years of Donald Trump's presidency? See, I, I would love for you to explain to me uh, these actions. I, I, I would love to hear you break down uh, why it's godly to have a president who trashes people. Is that godly? Is that what Jesus died for? Is that what Jesus wanted? I, will, I would love for you to explain that to me. Because I would dare say you can't explain it. I would dare say that your support of Donald Trump is because of his tax policy, not because of his poor policy. I would dare say you support Donald Trump not because of what he does for the needy, what he does for the wealthy. I would dare say that Donald Trump's presidency aligns with your prosperity gospel. And I would say that ain't got nothing to do with Jesus Christ. That ain't got nothing to do with the poor, the disenfranchised. It has nothing to do with the people who are suffering and who are hurting. What it has to do is with the rich getting richer and the poor getting poor. Every single one of us are going to have to be held to account one day. And you're going to have to be held to account for that prayer what you preached and you gave all those scriptures out and then you said from every strategy from hell so are you then saying that those who oppose Donald Trump have been planning this from hell mm -hmm. are you actually suggesting by virtue of your prayer that if you oppose Donald Trump that you are doing the bidding of the devil mm -hmm. if you say that every strategy from hell what you're saying is that if there is somebody who opposes what Donald Trump says and does, that means that they are an imp. They are doing the work of the devil. Is that what you're saying? Are you saying that all of these Christian pastors out here, the same ones who opened their church pulpits up to you to preach prior to Donald Trump, are you saying those individuals have been planning things in hell? Are you saying that somehow that they are doing the devil's work against Donald Trump? I didn't say it. You said it. I would love nothing more for you to clarify what you said. There won't be any yelling, won't be any cursing, won't be any of that. We're going to have us a nice Christian conversation. I don't need no help. It could be me and you. You know what? I make it easier on you. I do it in your church in Orlando. I will fly to Orlando and I bring my cameras with me to have the very conversation. If you are going to stand up as a pastor and give that kind of prayer, then you also need to explain the kind of prayer. Because remember, Paula White, last time you told me you got misquoted. Remember the email you sent me? Hmm. You sent an email to me saying that uh, you were out of the country uh, and you had been misquoted uh, when you made those comments uh, on uh, 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 Jim Baker's show. You, you remember that? Oh, I remember that. See, I, I remember the the, e the email where we went back and forth. And see, I'll pull up in a second. But I really want you to explain this because I really want the pastors out there who support Donald Trump to really defend what he says and does. And I want you to show me biblically where it is so I can be sure that we serve the same God, the same Jesus. Time for all to call. Robert, what's your thoughts? <laughs> well, I think this is a, a perfect example of why we need to have a separation between church and state. <laughs> I've worked on too many campaigns throughout the years of them dragging these pastors around, creating rent-seeking activities where pastors will endorse anybody for a healthy contribution and candidates will pretend to be whatever religion you want them to be uh, in order to get the pastor's congregation behind them. We need to have the church be the church and have politics be, the, be politics and not co-mingle the two to this extent. I remember nothing sadder than 2003 when George Bush was dragging T.D. Jakes and all these other 
the uh, black pastors around with him for the faith-based initiative because he uh, promised him two or three biscuits, et cetera. So let's separate these things out and make sure that we aren't commingling our politics with our religious life. Johanna? I think um, Robert made an excellent point, um, the whole notion about separation between church and state. Um, the fact of the matter is um, Minister Paula White, um, she's doing her job, right? She's been um, asked to no, 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 serve no, no, a particular no, no. role. Her job, no, no. her job is to be the pastor well, of the church well, that Zachary Timms and his wife built. Well, That's a job. Well, well part of mm. it is also to advise. Okay, go ahead. To be the spiritual advisor. Oh, no, no. Uh, I, I, of, just want to of, I just want to remind well, folks. That, that, it's that the I, church that Zachary Timms built. That I understand, but another aspect of her job is to advise, um, to spiritually advise, advise the, the, the president. And the fact that, you know, churches are not being taxed, right? Um, I, I think that there should be clearly a separation b between, between a, a state and, and churches. Uh, and another interesting point is that your God, your definition of your God, it's probably different from her definition of her God, right? So who's right here, right? Um, oh, no, no, hold up. No, 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 the word is the word. Uh -huh. All I'm simply saying is, see, this is real simple. Uh -huh. See, this is real simple. Uh -huh. Baby, the word is the word. Uh -huh. And I'll say Paula White. And he has different interpretations. No, 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 no. Right? No, this is real right? simple. And it's not defending this, her. No, this or is real you. simple. That's just for the, the word is the word. Yes. All I want, uh -huh. Pastor Paula White, mm -hmm. is to show me uh -huh. in the word and defend the policies. I'm sure she can show, show me. You I, I don't your think she can. No, no, I don't saying. think she can. Because the Bible is just like the U.S. Constitution. Nah, right? no, it's not. You have, no, it's there not. There is a law to support it, right? No, it's not. And, and I'm sure she can support whatever God, she wants. God, the the right? Bible talked mm -hmm. more about the poor than it did mm -hmm. the rich. Of course. Mm -hmm. And see, I will. I can show the policies, mm -hmm. and I want. I want mm -hmm. her to defend Greg the policies. Versus the word, and I'm sure she can defend it. I agree with it, but I'm sure she can defend it. She can. She can't. She can't use mm -hmm. the Bible mm -hmm. to defend it. But but I think that, and I agree with you on this. This is the 190th anniversary mm -hmm. of David Walker's appeal, 1829. Mm -hmm. David Walker said, "If you're going to be a Christian, black people, mm -hmm. go to the people who have you enslaved and ask them a couple of questions. Number one, you ask them if they're Christians. Mm -hmm. If they say yes, then you ask them, is slavery wrong according to the Bible? If they say yes, then you ask them, will you let me go?" Mm -hmm. If they say no, David Walker writes in his appeal that they are not Christians, but in fact they don't. Mm -hmm. And you have now been cleared by God mm -hmm. to end your condition mm -hmm. by any means necessary. Now, let's, let's look at this woman. When I hear her, it reminds me of uh, Charles Coughlin from the 1930s. Mm -hmm. uh, Father Coughlin, mm -hmm. the Catholic bishop, mm -hmm. who a Catholic uh, minister out, outside Detroit. I'll be in Detroit tomorrow for Cobra. The reparations mm -hmm. conference begins uh, today. But Coughlin was on the radio talking to millions of white crack Catholics railing against the Jews, railing against the New mm -hmm. Deal. They're not Christians. This is fascism, as you said. It is corporatism, and they are in the guise of Christianity. But if you take David Walker at his field, what she's praying to, I agree with you, is very different than what you're praying to, Roland, in your humanity, in T.D. Jake's humanity, in the humanity of the people that Robert talked about who invited him in, her into those pulpit. You're extending divine-inspired humanity to her. But in rejecting you, David Walker would say, Oh, we're clear now. We end our oppression by any means necessary. This is not a Christian, in fact, that we've just seen. That is, in fact, the devil. And I think that we're also witnessing the church playing a huge role in the political process, right? Oh, of course. Um, the church is not supposed to As be... As it has begun. Okay, hold on, hold on. That's American. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's, not let's clarify. Let's clarify. Because if you're not... Let's clarify. There's think, a separation. No, let's clarify. No, that, no, 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 no. Let's clarify. We said the church. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, what we are dealing with are white conservative That's right. evangelicals. That's right. You're dealing That's with black like pastors too. No, no, no. You deal, but yeah. it's a few of them. But yeah. you're dealing with the Franklin Grahams of the world. Come on, brother. Who wanted to deny the Christianity of Obama, but wanted to praise the demonic Christianity mm -hmm. of Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. That's right. See, that's what you're dealing with. You deal. Mm -hmm. See, again, I'm gonna call it like it is. Mm -hmm. These people only care about conservative judges because they want Roe v. Wade and the same-sex marriage to be overturned. That's right. That's all they care about. And all I'm saying is, put it out there. Mm -hmm. 
but don't stand there mm -hmm. and talk about my God well, I mean, and why, what's why, demonic why, why and that, what's bro? evil, huh? I mean, that's the, why can't they do that? I mean, in other words, yeah. why because can't they just say, we want to impose exactly. a white nationalist Christian theocracy on everyone in the country? Because, why can't they say that because, to you? Because uh, <laughs> they think we boo-boo the fool, and uh, they're sitting here <laughs> knowing that uh, if you do that, then your true intentions will be out there, and you cannot cloak yourself uh, in the throne. You can't cloak yourself in the Lord, blood of Jesus. Lord, have mercy. That's the real deal. Like my mom. And see, they don't. And see, <laughs> and, and see, and they don't want to do that. That's why I need y'all to understand, Robert. Jerry Falwell Jr., who's not a minister, who's caught up in this pool boy controversy in Miami. Robert Jeffress, all of these conservative evangelicals. Not a single one of them would sit down with Reverend Barber or Reverend Jim Wallace. Mm -hmm. In fact, Jerry Falwell Jr., when Reverend Barber in the Poor People's Campaign went down to Lynchburg, Virginia, he sent the word to the police department of the university, if they step foot on this campus, arrest them. And ordered not a, to all the student body, don't you dare go visit that church when they come to town. That's, if you want to say demonic, mm. that's demonic when you are so scared of the power of poor people mm -hmm. that you say, don't you dare step foot on this campus. Robert, final comment. Well, this is a perfect example of uh, what I was saying previously is that the church has been its most effective when it's that third rail, when it is united not around a particular candidate, not around a particular political mm -hmm. party, but an independent actor for the Christian community. As long as we have pastors and churches pledging allegiance to any candidate, any party, it dilutes their message because they have now sold out to their earthly powers and not to the divine power above. Pastor Paula White, these church doors are open. <laughs> You can come here anytime. I'll go to you. You can come here. You're always in D.C. And we can have that conversation. Because if you truly believe in the word of God, you wouldn't be afraid of another Christian, would you? I would love for you to answer that All right, question. folks, back to my unfiltered video in just one moment. All right, folks, they're back. MarijuanaStock.org is another great investment opportunity. If you were lucky enough to invest in their last crowdfunding campaign, you know they raised a ton of money in just a few months investing in legal marijuana farms. Those initial investors now own shares of a publicly traded company, and they are on fire. Now they have a new investment opportunity that is as good, if not even better, than the last one. I'm talking about industrial hemp CBD. For those who don't know, the hemp plant is the cousin to marijuana with a much higher concentration of CBD, which means that hemp CBD gives you all the medical benefits of marijuana without getting you high. Until recently, hemp farming was practically illegal in the U.S. and heavily regulated by the DEA. However, the 2018 Farm Bill changed all of that, making it legal to grow hemp CBD in the U.S. and creating one of the largest commodities worldwide. They need land to grow all the plants. Now, this makes for an incredible investment opportunity, and that's where our good friends at 420 Real Estate come in. Their business model is simple. They buy land that supports hemp CBD grow operations and lease it to licensed high-paying tenants. That's right. They are hemp CBD landlords, and you can get in on the action. You can invest in the crowdfunding campaign for as little as 200 bucks up to $10,000. Like I said, you don't want to miss out on this. To invest, go to MarijuanaStock.org. That's MarijuanaStock.org. And yes, this is a black-owned company. So you want to try it and get in the game. Back to your Roller Martin.